This is HMS Vengeance, a battleship launched by Vickers and Sons and Maxim in Barrow in Furness in 1899. Her construction was a major innovation in the history of shipbuilding. She was the first warship of her kind to be built, engineered, armed and armoured by a single company in a single location. Designed for service in East Asia at a time when the growth of Japanese naval power was a major concern for the British government, she needed to be able to stand up to the power of Japanese battleships, but also to be able to transit the Suez Canal, a vital link in Britain's empire, which led to restrictions in size and draft. As a result, she was immensely powerful and yet was small, light and fast in comparison with previous battleships. She was powered by two sets of triple expansion vertical inverted engines that could create a top speed of 18.5 knots, a very high speed for the era, a full two knots faster than the previous class of battleship. So much steam was required that she was equipped with 20 Belleveal boilers. This was a major innovation. These were water tube boilers, which gave them faster steam rising, higher power, and better economy than the traditional fire tube boilers, but at no expense in weight. To fire those, she could carry up to 2,300 tons of coal, and at top speed, consumed 10 tons of coal per hour. Her new boilers also allowed the ship's funnels to be arranged fore and aft, rather than the side-by-side -side funnel arrangement used in previous battleships. This made her appearance radically modern. With so much machinery, she needed immense amounts of ventilation below decks. She had twin propeller shafts mounting two inward-turning screw propellers. These increased her speed since they could be operated at higher revolutions than the outward-turning screws used in earlier ships. But they made steering difficult at low speed or when steaming in reverse. Note how varied her armament was. She had four 12-inch guns, 12 6-inch guns, 10 12-pounder guns, 6 3-pounder guns, 2 machine guns and 4 torpedo tubes. The provision of small guns to protect against torpedo boats is particularly interesting. At the time, torpedo boats posed the biggest threat to battleships. This was the era immediately before the effective mass introduction of submarines into naval warfare. The poles arranged on the outside of her hull are for rigging anti-torpedo nets when at anchor in harbour. Although a steamship, she was still fitted with two masts, each with a fighting top. The fighting tops are each fitted with a derrick to winch up ammunition, highlighting the impracticality of such armament in such a location. There are also numerous searchlights for spotting torpedo boats. Note the distinctive shape of her bow. This was a reinforced bow designed to ram another warship. The hull itself was a weapon. This was a hangover from a period when ships' guns were insufficiently powerful to decisively damage heavily armoured ships. By this period, however, hugely powerful guns such as these on HMS Vengeance had already changed the dynamic of naval warfare. This ram, therefore, although included in the design of one of the most modern warships in the world, was already obsolete. The captain had an elaborate personal walkway at the stern, reminiscent of the ornamental galleries and balconies of wooden ships of the line. She even has a bowsprit, a design element with no function at all on such a battleship. Vengeance was a symbol of power as much as a weapon. There are an extraordinary variety of ship's boats, all essential for the day-to-day -day operations of a battleship on a foreign station. The portholes near the bow are reinforced to protect the glass from the swinging anchors when they were attracted. Anchoring safely was still a problem yet to be solved. The role for which she had been designed was rendered redundant by an Anglo-Japanese treaty in 1902. Thereafter, all British battleships were removed from the China Station. She went on to play an important role in the First World War. Her guns covered the landing of the British Expeditionary Force in France, she served in the Cameroons in West Africa, the Dardanelles, the Eastern Mediterranean, East Africa and the East Indies. At the end of the war, she became a depot ship, and in 1922 this once innovative masterpiece was sold for scrap. <laughs> <laughs>